In this video, I'm gonna show you five Notion layouts to get you started. So before I begin, I just wanna say that Notion can be very daunting at first. And I just wanna show you guys these five layouts that could really just get you started. I mean, you really don't have to do a whole lot to get started on Notion, but I think that it's really good to at least get a decent foundation in your layout. So this first layout is what I like to call the minimalist layout. And it's simply just made up of three high level pages. The first one being the inbox, second one being for your personal tasks, and third being for your work or business related tasks. Now in the inbox, as you can see, I just have some tasks here. You of course can add whatever you want, but just for this example, I'm gonna keep it very simple. Now the nice thing about having this structure here is that you can just simply take a task and drag it into another page, like so. And if we go over to personal now, that task is now at the bottom of the list. Now what's nice about setting up your Notion account with this layout structure focused around tasks is that it actually mimics a lot of Todoist apps that you probably have already seen or used before. So what's also nice about Notion is you have a powerful flexibility to put things where you want them. So let's move to the work page. And as you can see here, I have a notes collapsible toggle block here under plan for the party. So if you click this, you can expand that and you can see the notes. Now what's nice about Notion is you can drag and move things around wherever you want. Say for example, you're just trying to get some things out of your head and you just want to get it into your Notion account for safekeeping. You can start typing out a task and then by pressing enter, creating a new block, but you can change that block into something else. So you could have another toggle list like we have above. You could have a even a page or just text without any bullets. So this type of flexibility can be very powerful. And if you're already really comfortable and used to the simple to-do list app layout that you're used to in other apps like Todoist, Remember the Milk, and so on, this could be a really comfortable layout for you on Notion, or at least just to get started for the first couple months until you learn about other features and you get comfortable with your own customization and your own style of layout. And if you feel like you want a little bit more out of this layout, all you have to do is click on new page and just start typing a new page. And as you can see, it adds it right below your last page here. So you can just keep adding pages as you see fit. All right, so I'm gonna call this layout the life-centric layout or life-focused layout. In this layout, as you can see on the left column view, we have inbox, grocery list, apartment, health, and so on. Now, what's nice about this layout is that it's focused on the different areas in your life. Um, and of course, you can change these to fit your needs. You could have a page for pets, you could have a page for your kids, you could have a page for family, you could have a page for social planning, etc. Now on this grocery list page, we just have items that we need to shop for. But if we go to the apartment page, I've divided things up a little bit. Um, on the left, we have tasks that are related to the apartment, but on the right, I create a section for documentation relating to the apartment. So this is one of the great things about Notion is that you can customize each individual page differently than the last. You don't have to have the pages match each other. You don't have to even have the same types of blocks. You can set up these pages any way you want within the confines of the blocks that Notion offers. Now in this example, I'm keeping it relatively simple. Um, we just have task here on the left and we have pages on the right. Now by setting up this page like this, you're giving yourself freedom to not only add tasks and complete tasks, but also keep track of just general information. So say right now you have all of your safety information or landlord information. So you have that stuff in a Microsoft Word document or you have it in a Google document or you have it in Evernote or you have it on the Apple Notes app or so on. You can, instead of having that information separate, you can actually have it all in one app. You can have that stuff right next to the task. This is definitely a layout technique that I highly recommend you try, at least at first, to see if you like it. Um, it's very powerful and it definitely can allow you to stay organized 
not lose any information, but also give you a general idea for your day or just a specific area in your life. All right, so this layout is what I like to call the goal-centric or goal-focused layout. In this layout, as you can see in the left column here, we have today, this week, this month, and this year. Now what's great about setting up your layout like this is that it allows you to focus on daily and weekly tasks, but also still giving you that high level view of being able to access and plan for the month and the year. So in the today view, I just have simple tasks, but if you go to this week, and as you can see here, I have the last week of July blocked out, and just three goals inside of this toggle block. And I've also added an archive page at the top. So after I've completed all the goals, I can check them off, close the toggle button, and just drag and drop this into the archive page. This allows you just to keep a history log of all your completed tasks and goals, just in the case you need to go back and look at something, or maybe you just wanna go back and you just wanna see your progress. And in the month view, as you can see, I have July and August already blocked out. Now what's nice about this layout is you can still have other months below the current month and you can just keep them collapsed. But say you don't complete a goal, you can just drag it in here. And let's just say it's August 1st. Just collapse that July month and then drag it into the archive. And now you have the task or goal moved into the current month. It just allows you some really nice, easy flexibility Really quick drag and drop, no hassle whatsoever. And now if we move back to the today page, as you know, I just have regular tasks here that don't necessarily have to deal with any goals. But you could, instead of doing that, you could drag your tasks from the week view into the today view. And this could really help you focus on one or two goals on a daily basis. All right, so this layout is what I like to call the all-in-one layout. Now, the number one reason that I love Notion so much is that Notion really gives you the power to do a lot of different types of things in one application, and I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see here on the side panel, I have tasks, projects, calendar, contacts, notes, and bookmarks. So this is just an example of a layout that you could have. Now the reason why I call this the all-in-one layout is because I'm putting all my tasks, projects, calendar events, and so on, all in one application. This layout is especially useful if you're someone that likes to keep all of your stuff together. And as you can see in my projects page, I have three different toggle blocks for three different areas for projects. And inside of them, I have project pages. Right now, there's only three project pages. But say as time went on, you added more and more projects, this page could become a little overwhelming. So what I recommend you do is, whenever you're focusing on a project for that given week or month, click on that project, and then click on the favorite button at the top right. And that's gonna essentially star or bookmark that page and pin it to the top here under the favorite section. And this is just a great way to stay focused on a certain project, but also to remind yourself of deadlines. Now, if we move to the calendar page, Notion actually has the ability to add a whole calendar inside a page, which is actually kind of amazing. And as you can see here, I have a couple events. I have pickup car, work party, and flight for Disney. Now you might be asking yourself, well, Jeff, I already have a calendar. I use Google Calendar, I use Apple Calendar. Now the difference between a calendar in Notion versus other calendars is that when you click on an event, it's technically like a page. So if you click here, you can start typing notes. You can add different blocks just as you would in any other page, which just gives you that extra boost to your calendar events, allowing you to add more information as needed. Now, if we click on contacts, you can see that Notion also lets you use tables. Now a table, just like the calendar Notion, also treats individual items as pages as well. So if I click on this open button here, I can once again start adding more information as if it was just a regular page. Once again, super useful. You don't have to use this feature if you don't need it, but it just gives you that option just in case you do need it down the road. So overall, this all-in-one style layout is really, really powerful if you want to keep all of your data together, if you want to keep all of your productivity needs, all your productivity stuff in one application. 
And lastly, if you're a fan of the getting things done methodology, we have a GTD layout right here. And in my personal opinion, the upside to choosing Notion over another app for a getting things done workflow is the fact that you can just set up the navigation any way you like. So, you know, if you don't like the way things are worded or organized, or you think GTD is missing some things that you would like to add, you can start in Notion with a GTD setup like this and then just add and customize to your heart's content. And if you're wondering how I got these icons next to the page names here, just move your cursor above the page title. You should see a button to add an icon. Just click on that link and it'll bring up a window here. And then you can select the emoji from this menu or you can type in the search box filter. And you can also change the icon by going to your left navigation panel, clicking on the icon, and there you go. Thanks for watching this video. Keep in mind that these layouts were mainly for personal use, but I do plan on releasing a video soon covering team use layouts as well. If you have any questions or if you'd like to suggest any apps, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Jeff Isley. Until next time, I'll see you soon.